More than any other holiday, Thanksgiving revolves around the kitchen, the dining room, and a wonderful meal. We're here with Dr. Ben Chapman, a food safety expert at North Carolina State University, who's gonna let us know what we can do to keep ourselves and our families safe in the kitchen and at the dining room table. Ben, I know that food safety is enormously important and that foodborne illness is a significant problem, but just how important is food safety and just how big of a problem is foodborne illness? We see around 48 million illnesses a year linked to food that people ate, food that wasn't supposed to make them sick, that made them sick. And that translates into about 3,000 deaths. So it, it's a big deal. Uh, that's one in six people in the U.S. will get sick every year from food. And a lot of these uh, illnesses are a result of mistakes that are easily avoidable in the kitchen? Um, yeah, some of them are. Some of them are uh, avoidable in home kitchens, restaurant kitchens, on farms. Really, it's a farm to fork issue. Uh, but. Um, it, it's an important thing for everybody to, to think about. Right, and what we're gonna talk about today is focused on what we can do in our own homes and in our own kitchens to keep our families safe. Exactly. So Ben, I know that uh, some people thaw their turkeys on the countertop, some people thaw their turkeys in the refrigerator, some people thaw them in water. What makes the most sense? What's the safest way to thaw your turkey for Thanksgiving? Yeah, and that's such a good question. And it's hard to answer because each of them has risks that are associated with them. Put them in the, um, in, in the sink with, uh, with cool water. Uh, what you risk is getting some of the stuff that's on the outside that might have salmonella all over your sink. And you know, it means that you've got to really do a better job uh, washing it. You can thaw it in a microwave. Um, and I've, I've eaten turkeys that have been thawed in a microwave. The risk there is that it's going to heat this a little bit unevenly and it's going to continue to cook a little bit afterwards so if you thought on microwave you want to cook it right away throw it in, in the oven um, on the counter is one that historically uh, i think we hear a lot about people um, used to do it quite often uh, it takes a lot of temperature monitoring because what you can have in a situation in a larger turkey especially you may still have a really frozen center uh, and as the outside of this turkey gets warm. And that's where you don't want to have, you don't want to have that situation because the, any of the bacteria that are on the outside are going to grow. Right. Um, and then the last one, which is, which is how we thought the one that we're, we're going to cook today, is in the refrigerator. And what that, it, it takes a little bit of planning. You know, you and I have talked about this uh, before. You need, um, you know, three, four, five days, depending on how big your turkey is. And so when you put this in a fridge and it starts to thaw, you can get some dripping underneath here and you wanna have something to catch that so you can pull those juices. Really what matters the most is that the turkey itself doesn't go above 41 degrees Fahrenheit for more than four hours. The biggest thing when it comes to thawing is having the inside and the outside of the turkey thaw at pretty much the same rate because you don't wanna let bacteria grow on the outside while the inside is still very cold. And that's gonna happen if they're not at the same rate. So when we open up a turkey, I know that a lot of juices come out and, and tend to go all over the place. What's the best way for us to handle that? And is it important that we handle that a specific way? It's really important that we handle it. We wanna make sure we're not spreading that bacteria juice all over the kitchen. So now our turkey is all thawed, or we could be starting from a fresh turkey. We're trying to make sure that we don't contaminate uh, our kitchen with what's inside here, because this really is, uh, you know, it's raw meat. It, it could have salmonella, it could have campylobacter on it. Um, as, you, as you can sort of see here, Matt, as you're doing this, we've even got a little bit of pooled juice below it already, just from what we were, while we were thawing it. Mm -hmm. So we know that there's gonna be stuff that comes out of this. And also, you know, you're using uh, kitchen shears here or uh, scissors to do this. They're, they're up against the skin of this, of this turkey. They're gonna be picking up any of the bacteria that's, that's on there. Okay. Now for us today, um, you can see we, you know, we've still got a little bit of thaw in here or a little bit of ice. Didn't, you know, our, our turkey here didn't, didn't fully thaw. So it's gonna make it even more important that we are checking the temperature of this as we cook it. Okay, so we're pulling out the turkey neck and the organs. Mm -hmm. Are we gonna do any stuffing? We're not using stuffing. The turkey's gonna cook a lot faster and it's gonna be safer. 
So a lot of recipes and cookbooks tell you that you need to wash or rinse off your turkey or chicken. Is that safe? Is that something that you should be doing? It's really common. I don't know where it came from historically, but it seems to be this, this myth that it's going to do something safety-wise, that you're going to be able to wash off the salmonella or campylobacter that's here. You can't. And in fact, it's worse by putting it into the sink, turning the faucet on. Um, it, the velocity of that water can spray those pathogens up to a yard away from your sink. So you could be contaminating the rest of your kitchen or any of the other foods that you're gonna prepare later. So when you're washing the turkey or chicken, you're actually increasing the risk that you're gonna get your family sick. Yeah, and you're decreasing the risk by cooking it regardless of whether there's pathogens on the outside of it. So that's the control measure is to cook it to the right temperature. So if you think that you have to wash your turkey, that you're worried about the grime on the outside that from a quality standpoint, um, the, best, the best thing to, to do in that case is to use a paper towel, pat it down, and then throw this paper towel out because it's going to be contaminated with whatever's on the outside. Right. But you do not need to even wipe it down, right? No, you don't need to at all. It's just a perception. So what's the safest way for us to clean everything up before we do anything else? Well, we know that there's going to be stuff in this juice. There's going to be bacteria there here. We assume that it's going to be there. Okay. So we want to make sure that we are doing two things. We're going to clean it all up and then we're going to sanitize it. It's two separate steps. Cleaning means we're going to uh, add soap. We're going to take away all the debris that's here. And then afterwards, we're going to go ahead and sanitize. So what I, what I like to do with this is use some sort of a dish soap uh, that I'm going to have a... Um, a scrub brush or something in, uh, ready to go and then go ahead and clean up and then afterwards use a spray bottle of a sanitizer and this is just a bleach, uh, one tablespoon of bleach in a spray bottle uh, diluted with water to, to sanitize everything down afterwards. So what do we need to do with the kitchen shears and other utensils that we were using? Yeah, so we, we've got plates, we've got shears, utensils that are we need to assume are contaminated at this point. We need to get them into the dishwasher. If we don't have a dishwasher, we get them into the sink and clean and sanitize those as well. And we need to clean the sink after we've done that, right? We for sure do, yeah. Cleaning the sink and then our hands as well. That's one of the things that they're tools that, that could be contaminated. So we wanna make sure that we're washing our hands. That's the last step that we do at the end of this and making sure we're not contaminating the kitchen any further. So we've got two cutting boards here. Um, why, why do we need two? Well, really, uh, when we're preparing a meal like this, where it's complex, we got turkey, we've got fruits and vegetables, we're gonna do some roasting, we're gonna eat some things that are ready to eat, we're gonna cut these carrots up and put them in a salad. You wanna make sure that you keep everything separate. So any contamination that might go on to one uh, cutting board, uh, is contained and you're not putting those ready to eat foods on that cutting board. So we don't want to cut up the turkey and then use the same cutting board to cut up our carrots. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, that, it's as simple as that. Then there are other things that we have to think of is did we use this knife with that turkey? And, you know, we, um, when we were making our turkey today, uh, we cut it open with some scissors, but some people might use a knife. And, and you want to make sure anything that's come in contact with that raw meat, cutting board, counter, uh, knife, that it's all uh, washed, you know, clean and sanitized before we use it again. Is it better to use wooden cutting boards for some things and plastic cutting boards for different things? Yeah, and there, there's been some, some research done on whether one is better when it comes to microbiology. You know, do, do these uh, plastic ones uh, harbor bacteria because they get grooves? D is the wood a little more problematic because you can't wash it? And it's the evidence in, in the literature would show that it's it, it, it's kind of a wash. It doesn't really matter. Both are about the same. I personally prefer to use plastic when it comes to meat because I don't want to try and wash that in my sink. I want to throw that directly into my dishwasher. Um, and we have a system at our at our house where it's you know this is the plastic is for for meat and we use our wood ones for uh, fruits and vegetables and, and still clean and sanitize the same. So if we're making a salad, we've got the lettuce here. Um, do we need to take this out and wash it? So, I mean, that's a great question. When it comes to something like this, this is a triple washed um, bag lettuce that's ready to eat. Um, you can't 
do anything more in, the, in our kitchen here to reduce risk. If we go ahead and wash it, we increase the likelihood that we might be adding some of the, the pathogens that we just had in our kitchen from the turkey right onto this salad. So it's best to not do anything with it, open it up, and just go ahead and put it in the bowl. So the turkey looks beautiful. The meat's beginning to pull away from the bone a little bit, but this pop-up thermometer has not done anything. Um, do we use one of these sort of dial thermometers? Do we use a digital thermometer? What's the best way to go? Well, uh, really, I prefer the digital thermometer, tip-sensitive digital thermometer, because what it shows is exactly what the temperature is at the point where, the, where it's inserted in the meat. Those types of thermometers aren't as reliable. It takes the average of the stem of that thermometer. This tells us exactly where the tip is. So the digital thermometer is a lot more precise? N yeah, much more, much more precise and allows you to get a very quick read of, uh, as what the temperature is when it goes in. This, you have to wait much longer for it. So I prefer this. Uh, this okay. And so where do uh, you insert the thermometer? Well, right now I'm inserting it into the thickest part of the meat uh, and then checking the temperature. I want to keep it away from bone as much as possible because bone's going to conduct heat much better than the meat is. And what I really care about out of this whole thing is if this turkey meat hit 165 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm going to check in lots of places. So as you can see here, we're at 159, 158. Move it over here to a different part of the bird and you can see the temperature drop. And as we go to other parts, we try to get into areas that are you know, really, um, really thick. You can see the temperature dropping even more down to 145 degrees here. So we know this is, it's not ready. Right. Um, the the pop-up, it's an indicator, but this really tells us that even though some parts look like they're done, it's not ready. It's not a safe bird to eat yet. We've put the turkey back in the oven for a little while. Uh, the button has popped up, but I know that these pop-up thermometers are not a reliable way of telling whether the turkey is safe to eat. So what do we need to do with the digital thermometer to let us know that this, this is done? Well, we really need to put the digital thermometer into multiple spots because you're going to get parts of this turkey are going to be cooler than the others. Um, fat matters, where it was in the oven matters. So we're going to do that. We'll stick it in right here and see what the reading is. And we're well above 165 degrees Fahrenheit, which is what we're looking for. That's our, that's our threshold. Over here, same thing in the 180 area. And then here is really a key spot. This is close to where we want to see, um, you know, this is the, some of the dirtiest part of the, the bird is inside that cavity. And we want to see well above 165 in this area. And we are. By taking the temperature in multiple spots and knowing that it's hit 165, we've done everything that we can to reduce risk. Once we've had a chance to dig in and enjoy Thanksgiving dinner, we're going to have some leftovers. That's a Thanksgiving staple. So what do we need to do in order to store the food properly so that it's safe for us to eat later? Well, the first thing we want to do is get it so we're cooling it as quick as possible. We don't want to leave it out on the counter and let people pick away at it for hours and hours after the meal. Um, we want to get it cool. We want to get it below 41 degrees. What I like to do with the meat is put, put that into a plastic bag. I want to cut it off the bone and put it into a, 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 you know, a bag where I can lay it flat in the refrigerator and get a lot of air circulation around it. It's going to cool it the quickest. So that's what we do with, with meat. When it comes to things that are larger um, and, and sort of heavier, denser. So bulkier stuff like mashed potatoes? Yeah, um, get a lot of questions uh, about well, I need to leave that out a little bit first because I don't want to put it hot into my refrigerator. And that's kind of a myth. That's a, a, something that might have impacted refrigerators 30 years ago, 40 years ago, but now it's not a concern. We, we want to get all of this food in, covered, and in the fridge as quick as possible. Right. So don't worry about overloading the refrigerator. It can handle it. That's right. Yes. If we follow all these safety tips, then we'll probably have a healthier Thanksgiving, right? It will have reduced the risk of anybody in the family getting sick? Exactly, that's what we're trying to do here is demonstrate uh, all those steps that you can take in your home to reduce risk so we don't have illnesses. And uh, uh, happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving everybody.